Hi, welcome to the workshop. Um, today uh, I want to talk about uh, these N-scale turnouts from British Fine Scale. Um, I think they really are another game changer for me and uh, I'd like to walk through, demonstrate how I put one of these together uh, and explode some of the myths uh, that we probably all, including myself, have held uh, about how building track is, is too difficult. Because I think the uh, the visual qualities of this uh, Code 40 bullhead rail in N scale make the effort worthwhile. And if it's something uh, that perhaps you've thought is beyond you, then maybe by me <laughs> uh, going through this, um, you know, warts and all, uh, it, it's uh, it's going to help in that way. Um, so yeah, I mean, this isn't going to be uh, an instructional video per se. I'm just going to walk through literally as I build one. Um, but just to explode even the, the sort of myths that might sur surround point construction in terms of soldering. Um, apart from soldering the uh, turnout blades to the uh, tie bar, uh, everything else is uh, is literally just cutting and uh, filing and a little bit of bending. Um, all the main parts are preformed. So what we've got is we've got in the kit, we have a, a turnout base and uh, we have some um, turnout blades. We have the frog crossing. Both the blades and the frog crossing are pre preformed, so they've been milled or, or filed. I don't know what the process is. We've got some plain track as well. Um, the only tools I'm going to use, I've got a, uh, a blade or an old hobby blade here. I use that to score a little mark on the rail where I know, need to cut it. Uh, I've got some track cutters, uh, a pair of pliers and a needle file. And literally that's all I'm going to need. So without further ado, I'm going to move the camera a bit closer so you can see what I'm up to. Uh, and I'll try and not talk too much. Um, uh, and let's see how we get on. Okay, so uh, so excuse the mess uh, of my bench here. Um, there are some fantastic instructions on the uh, British Fine Scale website, which I do thoroughly recommend you have a read through before uh, having a go yourself. Uh, you also need to print out the right size template for your turnout. I've got a B6 here. Um, this one I've built already. I did make uh, one error when I was doing it. I cut some of the, the one of the frog rails too short, so I've actually had to shorten it by, by one sleeper. Um, but I think when I come to use them on my layout, that's not gonna be a problem. Okay, so uh, I don't intend to talk through everything. Um, just to touch on it again, we've got some preformed um, blades, uh, the frog. We've got a little kit here for the uh, tie bar, which includes all the parts you need for that. Uh, some plain rail uh, and the base so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the plain rail and i'm going to start to form some of the parts ahead of assembly basically um some of the the, the wing rail and these i'm going to say turnout parts I, I, i'm not sure of the exact name of these but the, the rails around the frog they need forming first and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark them up i'm going to make a little mark on the rail um mark mark them up and then cut them with my uh, rail cutters uh, and then I need to introduce a slight bend in them as well. So I'm going to do all that and then I'm going to start to put the, the turnout together and you'll see how quickly it does. Uh, one thing to note with Co 40 rail is that there is um, a bullhead rail, especially is that obviously that there's a, a top and a bottom. And uh, even though you think it's probably the same, it's not. The, the top is fatter than the bottom. If you cut them and shape them the wrong way, then you'll find they won't slide into the base. So uh, do check when you start working on it. So. Uh, I always like to see that um, I'm starting from a nice tidy end of the rail first. So I've just uh, tidied the end up of that with the needle file. Uh, and I'm obviously building uh, a left hand here, so I'm going to work off the left hand plan. Move the plan a little bit to suit my... Uh, so I'm literally going to lie the rail on the plan and then just put a little nick where I need to cut. And I'm using the, the rail cutters cut up to that. Um, and try and hold both pieces so it doesn't fly off. Now, you will note that um, what you've then got is a, a chamfered cut uh, on the end of your rail. So you just need to take that off as well before you do your next piece. Um, what I'll do before I do all this is I'll tidy up all the ends anyway. So that's the first one. Okay, just need to keep an eye on which ones I've done and which ones I haven't done.
do keep uh, a track of which ones you've done and which ones you haven't done. Um, they are different lengths, as I found the first time I assembled one of these. It's not hard to find which ones are which, um, but if you, uh, you don't mix them up to start with, then that's even better. And if you just heard that on the video, the, uh, the quarter past four train um, on the Coughlin Railway has just gone past and uh, sounded its horn at the occupation crossing across the valley. So now the wing rails, or check rails I should say, actually that's what they call them in the middle, the wing rails. See every time I'm just going back to straighten the uh, the tip again of the rail before I cut the lap, the, the next cut. Otherwise, you'll end up with one end that's chamfered and one end that's straight. It's just the nature of the way the blades work or, or the cutters work. Right, I'll put that to one side. Uh, I'm just going to just dress the end of each rail. Make sure there's no remaining rough edges or, or burrs. I usually do this with some uh, music playing in the background. Oh, there's the dog. Okay, that's the check rails. And the wing rails, the same thing. So the remaining two pieces of uh, plain rail obviously form the, the outside rails and we'll thread those through in due course. So this turnout is um, is N gauge. It's not uh, two mil fine scale. Um, it uses the same rail as the two mil fine scale, um, but obviously the gauge is nine rather than nine point four two, uh, and the uh, the flange ways are obviously a lot coarser. But uh, but they're still a lot finer than standard N gauge points, and I think that's the point here. The um, that by to look at these, you would not know they weren't double O. Um, you know, that's how far the, the hobby's come. Okay, so I've now formed, uh, I've now cut these. Um, what I now need to do is I need to bend them. Um, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rail onto the plan and just put a little mark where I need to bend it so I know. Um, with all of these and the check rails as well. Thank you. 
I mean, the bend we're putting on these is virtually negligible. You can barely see it. It's uh, it's very, very subtle, but it is required just so that the flange is on your RP25 and modern N-gauge uh, rolling stock doesn't catch. So um, again, making sure that you've got the rail the right way up. Um, literally, I'm just going to put that now in the pliers and just do a very gentle bend and then make sure it's not too much. Make sure you put the bends in the right way. If it feels like it's too much of a bend, you can just adjust it as, as you see fit. So just one. Checking I've got it the right orientation. And I'm just using the light just to catch where I've made the nick so I can see the uh, the point to bend it. No pun intended. I place it back down on the clam. Right, uh, now this one is this side. And it's the top, so I'm going to need to bend this one away from me. I'm placing the, the parts down on the plan uh, in the right place so that I know where I'm up to or I'm not um, suddenly going to go, oh my goodness, which way am I supposed to bend this? So it does help uh, to have the plan in front of you. Right, what you do is just check how sharp some of these are because that one in particular seems a bit uh, that's better. Okay, so Right, I'm going to move this out of the way. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to slide. Um, uh, oh, I don't even know the names. I'm just going to slide two rails in here and then build up the rest of the uh, the parts here. And then I'll slide the frog in and we'll see how it goes. I mean, um, reading the notes, obviously everything's got a name. Um, so you can swat up. But uh, to me, it's more important the way it works rather than uh, and rather than how it looks. Okay. So I'm just going to check on this one I've made already. Yeah. You just have to be careful with the web. It is flexible, you need to bend it out of the way as you slide these first ones in. It's pretty robust, I've well, not damaged it myself yet. I'm not going to slide those into their final position yet. I'm going to put these wings in first. Again, making sure that you've got the, the finer profile at the base. Slide that one back to me too. Okay, looking good so far. Right. 
I'm going to add, I'm not quite sure if this is the right order or not, but I'm going to add these since I've bent them up uh, the wrong way around. Now these, as you slide them in, because you put a slight kink in the ends, you just need to um, manipulate them. Sometimes having a pair of pliers to help guide them into the chairs is, is useful. I'm literally just pushing against the rail with the end of my uh, the end of my nail. I think I've just actually broken a chair there, the first one I've ever broken, so you have to see how fragile, that's because I didn't line up and slightly straighten the rail as I slid it in, so it was pushing against the edge of it rather than through the gap. Okay, right, so uh, I don't know if you can see that, we've assembled the beginning of our, our crossing. I'm going to take the these rails out now. Obviously, uh, they'll be left and right-handed, won't they? Because, of course, it'll be a different piece. If you read the instructions, it describes how these are formed. As long as you get them the right way up, you'll get a perfect crossing. So, see, I'm going to study everything to make sure I do do that. Okay. I'm going to run my fingers over them to get rid of any residue of the glue that's on that uh, sticker. Okay, so. And they literally, these just push into place. So I'm just going to pop, pop it loosely into place. And then I'm going to add the second one. So that I can make that join um, where the two rails join together. So the main straight through route is the rail that goes in first and you push that in as far as it will go and then you just put the other one right up against it as far as it will go. There we go. So now uh, we've got the frog assembled. Obviously got very long rails here but we can sort those out later. Right, the next job, uh, just thread the, uh, the outer rails in, into position, just check the end of the rail. I'm just going to... Okay, so I'm not going to slide that any further yet. I'm going to just do the other one. 
is what we're going to do is we're going to assemble the tie bar before we go much further. That sounds really tricky, doesn't it? But, uh, assembling it is very straightforward. So I noticed that that one wasn't sliding as well as I'd like it to, so I'm just tapering and making sure that the end here is, is not got any burrs on because that's going to catch up as I slide through. They should slide through very easily, especially these straight ones. So I'll put that on, that's much better. Okay. So lining it up, I can see that my tie bar's down here, so I'm going to slide the rails right down onto that just to... Okay, I'll put that to one side. Right, in this little bag here, where we've got various bits and pieces, I've got a couple of pins, a couple of spaces, uh, and a tie bar itself. So, um, what you need to do is basically you'll thread the two pins through here, bend them over 90 degrees, and chop them off with just a tail showing. That tail will become, um, will get soldered to uh, the turnout blade and the uh, the round head of the pin is on the bottom uh, and what that means is obviously as you slide this from side to side uh, you're not putting any stress on that joint because the pin's free to move okay so that's the only soldering you've got to do on the whole kit um, and there really legitimately is no other way you could do it so it's literally a case of popping these pins right through pulling them tight um, they're very soft so you can just bend them with your fingers over okay and our second one make sure obviously you get the same way around Okay, so then uh, we just leave, chop these, leaving just a tiny tail, well, a bit of a tail, perhaps another and a half, two more. Um, okay. So I'll pop, uh, pop that into place. Um, with the, uh, the bent over bit pointing to the foot okay so if you're holding that in place you can now just slide the rails over it the outer rails Oop. okay so obviously that's now locked in place isn't going anywhere okay uh, carefully packaged in, uh, in so that we don't damage them. I guess they're quite fragile. Uh, we've got the, the blades here. Now, again, these are going to be handed, aren't they, if you think about it, because um, they've been milled away on one face, but full head rail has a top. So I'm just going to, again, run my fingers over them just to pull off any residue of, uh, of glue. It doesn't feel like there is any on these, which is good. Now, what you need to do is you need to look, comparing it to the diagram, um, and thinking where you need your uh, blade to start. Um, rather than measure up against the diagram, you measure up against your actual turnout just to check that you're going to get the right length. So um, this one is this side. So obviously it needs to come all the way down to the last slide. The nose of it needs to be just over the slide, last slide chair. So I'm just going to mark that. Now we need to leave a gap here.
just going to do the old um, check because obviously once you cut it, it's a bit too late to go, oh my goodness, I've cut it too short. So let's just check. In fact, if anything, that's probably slightly too long. So that's okay. We'll go with that. We can then thread this into place. Right, again, I note I've not done the greatest job of smoothing the end of that down, so I'm just going to go back and tidy up because we don't want that to be. the dog again. I'm just gently threading it in with the uh, pliers so I don't uh, damage the tip because if I slide it in with my fingers obviously I'm pushing against the, uh, the middle bend so we don't want to be doing that so just leave a slight gap like so. Just checking I've got the length right. Yeah, looks perfect. It's just about a mil and a bit over the end of the last slide chair. So that's exactly where we want it. Measure up the next one. This one's a bit easier because it's straight. Yeah, that didn't mark it quite as well as I wanted. Very nicely. Okay. Just checking the length, looks okay. Again, bro. Right, uh, so now we're on to that scary stage because you're all thinking, right, well, that looks straightforward enough, didn't it? Um, but now what we've got to do, I've got to get a soldering iron out. Um, you know, that's that's beyond me, I can't do that. Well, it's perhaps not as hard as you think. What we've got to do is, um, we've got to use these little spaces here um, and they clip over the rail and they hold the rail in the right place to make sure your gap's the right size. If you use some um, power flux um, paste and put a tiny dab of the paste on the uh, pin in the tie bar and not just touching the rail and then dab the tiniest spot of uh, 180 degree cars solder on your iron and just dab it gently onto there, you know, it, it will flow straight on and it'll be a really strong joint and you've just got to do that twice. So. Uh, what I need to do now is I need to put away some of this and I need to get my soldering iron out. So just give me a minute. So back again. Um, I've got my uh, iron. Uh, it's just an Antex 25 watt uh, standard tip. Nothing special about it at all. Uh, power flux. Um, flux. I usually use uh, a liquid flux when I'm doing uh, kit construction, but 
this seemed to be a better solution for what I'm after now. So it's like a paste. Uh, and then just some cars, 188 solder. I tend to try and use cars solder if possible rather than the, uh, unbranded stuff. Uh, and actually these little legs that we, we chopped off earlier um, are now gonna come in useful uh, for digging up some flux. So uh, what we've done with the turnout is we've uh, we've taken these, you get a pair of them, but these little chair things um, and they clip over uh, the, the rail uh, and just tuck into the gap. Oh, <laughs> I'll have to do that again. Um, what they do is they ensure that the slide bar, the turnout, uh, tie bar, sorry, is slid right over uh, and pushed up against the, the outer rail. So I'm gonna actually gonna solder this one here and then switch over and do it the other way. Okay, so. And we just need just the tiniest spot of solder. So, and the iron. Try and do it without getting my head in the, in the shot. Um, okay. That looks okay. in reverse so we use the spacer to slide that over ensuring a pin is touching the other turn that blade Probably got enough solder on, on the iron already. Yeah, what I've done is I've actually put slightly too much on there, so I'll just clean it up in a minute with the blade. But So there we have it. Uh, I did get a tiny bit of solder on the back of that blade, but it just uh, scraped off gently with this. Um, so we've got a, uh, a completed turnout. Just needs wiring up, clipping the ends of the rails to the length. Uh, one thing I'm, I t did last time and I'll probably do again is add just a touch of solder to these joints here. Um, I don't think it's really necessary, but to put it just for my peace of mind. Uh, and I would also suggest uh, uh, it's worth putting uh, a spot of super glue on a couple of the chairs just to stop the rail sliding around. Um, but literally, apart from the uh, you know the the soldering here, which you know the first time you do it is very nerve wracking, but actually is surprisingly easy. Um, you know, there's there's nothing complicated about this. You just take your time You're using very basic tools, aren't you? You know, a knife, with, um, pliers, and, and track cutters. Um, but the, the results uh, speak for themselves and it's another art tool to your arsenal. I mean, if we're not learning and we're not stretching ourselves and not trying new things with our, with our hobby, then, um, you know, perhaps it's, uh, it's time to rethink, you know. Anyway, uh, hopefully that was, uh, was of interest and informative in some way. Uh, sorry, it's uh, it stretched out a bit longer than I intended uh, when I started, but I've taken my time um, and been really keen to explain steps as we went. So, uh, so there we are. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, please do like and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.